everyone. Welcome to Reading with Ms. Momo. I'm so glad that you could join me today. Today we're going to read a book that has been recommended to me by a friend. I love getting recommendations from friends for books. And so this is another one of those that has been recommended and I hope that you'll enjoy it. It's one I've never read before, but it's a fun book. So join me with now as I read this book. Owen knew that at the heart of a snowman is a perfect snowball. To make a perfect snowball, you need the powdery kind of snow that's a touch melty. Owen packed handfuls of it into a round ball and rolled the ball around, this way and that, and so he rolled it into something large. You make the best snowman, said Owen's little sister. His eyes are looking at me. Owen smiled with pride. Those aren't eyes, they're buttons. His sister dug a carrot from her pocket and handed it to him. It was twisted and thin. He took it anyway. How will you keep him warm? He doesn't need to be warm, said Owen. He's cold all the way through. But he was warm inside, she said. Sure of it. Owen was too busy to argue. He looked at her scarf. He could use that. His sister's hand went up to her scarf. The knitting gate into great holes the way only comfy scarves do. Okay, you can have it, she said. I won't need it tomorrow. There's going to be lots of sun. So they have built a snowman. Owen has built this snowman, and she's going to share her scarf with them. Every year, Owen built a snowman on Christmas Eve but the sun always melted it by Christmas Day. There's got to be a way to keep it around, Owen told himself. A ho, 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 and a shuffling sound came from the chimney. Owen was so worried about his snowman, he didn't even notice. Owen is so busy looking out the window at his snowman, he didn't even notice that Santa was in the living room. Long after bedtime, a brilliant light beamed down on Owen's snowman. It came from a vessel hovering overhead. Owen ran out of the house and called, What are you doing with my snowman? He grabbed hold of his snowman and was pulled inside. So they were pulled inside of this giant snow creature thing in the sky. Within the vessel, it was still and hushed in a fallen snow. Snowmen pressed on every side. In the distance, Owen saw steam pumping up from a factory all shiny and bright. So here are all these snowmen, and there's a factory down there he can see. Wonder what's going on here. Owen and this snowman were abruptly ejected from the vessel into the vast factory. Please step away from your snowman, said the chilling voice on a loudspeaker. You're too warm, Owen. Piece by piece, Owen's snowman was carried off along smooth tubes. Owen felt hot with anger in spite of the terrible cold in the factory. They were unmaking his snowman. And here they are in this factory, unmaking his snowman that he had just made and cared about. What on earth? This is strange. The next room hummed with the sound of destruction. Owen saw his snowman's head placed on the conveyor belt. The rabbit's job was to eat the nose. He was good at his job. Steadily, steadily went the woolies, unknitting the sister's scarf. Nearby, a moose snapped the snowman's twig limbs in two. What kind of barbaric place was this? Here are all the different little creatures working in the factory, doing different things. What Owen saw at the next session made him gasp. They had taken apart his snowman, snowflake by snowflake, and now a pointy instrument was tweezing apart each snowflake branch by branch. Outraged, Owen turned to the polar bear. How would you like someone pulling off your arms? The polar bear hunched a little closer over his microscope. That's when it hit Owen. 
Everybody thinks the sun melts snowmen, but they're wrong. Snowmen are just brought here. Back off, said the polar bear. You're too warm. What difference does it make if I'm too warm? You're already taking apart the snowman. You're getting warmer, Owen, said the chilling voice from the loudspeaker. Move along now. Exit right. Mind your step. And here's Owen talking to the polar bear. And here are the little snowflakes. Each snowflake is very different. Each snowflake is unique, different. Owen stepped out onto an open field of snow piled and puffed, wondering if he could still save his snowman. A vehicle hauling a load of carrots was coming so fast. Owen raced to the driver. Those look perfect, he said, puzzled. Yes, said the rabbit. We grow them here ourselves. They're for snowmen. Snowmen, said Owen. But I thought you were destroy some men. The rabbit stared at Owen. Why would we destroy a snowman if we grow new noses? And look at all the noses that she has for the snowman in her little snow cloud. Owen is so confused. He doesn't know what on earth they're doing. It began to feel warmer. Up ahead, Owen saw a crop of chimneys sticking out of the snow. A white cap leapt into one and went down. A moment later, it reappeared, but now it was black with soot. Held in its small mouth was something round and black. What is that you're carrying, said Owen. The cat's eyes went wide and the thing dropped from his mouth. Owen caught the lump of coal and turned it over in his hand. These are eyes, right? I use buttons, but I know people use coal. The, cart, the cat darted off. Eyes, nose, everything like new, Owen called after it. Hey, are you making a snowman? But the cat was gone. Owen stomped his foot in frustration and the snow caved in beneath him and he dropped right through. This story is interesting, isn't it? I never thought about all these different ways of doing a snowman. Okay, we gotta turn the book up now. And he was pitched into a cloud, cold gusts below, Owen here and there, setting him to spin and spin. Never had he felt so fine, so fluffed, so wonderful. Owen had dropped into a chamber for making snowflakes. Suddenly the chamber stopped gusting and Owen fell into the cold floor. Two walruses stared at him. Look, he got them all dirty, said one, and sent the snowflakes to be cleaned every, every needle, every branch. We don't take snowmen apart, said the other, and clean them from top to bottom for nothing you know. So why do you take them apart and clean them? The walruses looked at each other and shrugged. I know, said Owen, it's to make the perfect snowman. Owen was so pleased with his discovery, he thrust his hand back into the chamber and caught a snowflake. Don't touch, said the walrus. The snowflake melted in Owen's hand. See, you're too warm. But that's how you build a snowman, said Owen, with your hands. And there are the walruses, and there he is floating around, being fluffed like a snowflake. Now we're going to turn the book back. At the last station, Owen discovered the piece of his snowman was all perfectly remade. A puffin stared up at him. From the top of the bottom, we've improved on your snowman, said the puffin. Only we had a bit of trouble getting him started. The puffin held the very beginning of the snowball, and they were poor, poor beginnings indeed. I show you how Owen scooped up a handful of snow. He held the snow until he got a touch melty from the warmth of his hands. And now the snow rolled nicely into a round ball. You roll the best snowball, said the puffin. Feel, said Owen, giving the puffin his hand. The puffin held Owen's hand. Warm. And there's the puffin holding his hand. And there's his perfect snowball. He starts with a perfect snowball. One ball at a time, Owen and the Puffin made the snowman. As Owen wrapped his sister's scarf around it, the Puffin said, 
Can I tell you how long we have tried to make a snowman? This is your first? The puffin blushed, yes. Owen looked back at the millions of clean and improved pieces of other snow snowmen. What's all that for? You, said the chilling voice from the loudspeaker. That's why we brought you here. Owen looked up. You brought me here? Yes, said the voice. You will roll the perfect snowball at the heart of all of our snowmen. Worried, Owen looked around. Meanwhile, the animals had gathered to see their first snowman. One pointed at the snowman. Look, it's melting. Not possible, boomed the voice of the loudspeaker. At these temperatures, a snowman can last forever. And there they all are watching him build a snowman. The Puffin set up a machine that would uncover the nature of any snowman problem. With the flip of the switch, it was revealed. From deep inside the snowman glowed a warm snowball. What has the boy done, said the voice from the loudspeaker. It sounded a little disappointed. When a boy makes a snowman, he gives it a heart, said the Puffin. It gets so warm inside that the snowman can't last. The animals looked at each other. All at once, they knew the factory would close because the only place a snowman would last forever was in the boy's heart. He had given his snowman a heart. And there's the snowman melting. Now, the name of this book is A Heart of a Snowman. It's by Mary Carilla and Eugene Yelchin. But I want to read you about them. I'll just tell you about them. They decided to write this book. And so they went and lived in a place where it was snow so that they could study snowflakes. And they lived there for about a year and they studied snowflakes and learned more about snow because where they had come from, there was no snow. You know, if you wanna learn about things, you have to experience it, don't you? And this little boy experienced what it was like to build a snowman. But in every snowman, there's a heart, and that's what this book is about. It's about the heart of a snowman. When you do something, when you make something, you make it with your whole heart. You put your whole self into it, no matter what it is. But in this case, it was a snowman. Oh, maybe that you can make some snowmen, maybe out of cotton balls, or maybe out of paper. But if you can draw some snowmen, they'll be your own snowmen with your own personalities and you will be able to give them each a heart. Until we meet again, I love you and I hope you love other people and show your heart to other people and smile and be happy. God bless.